Hey guys, Neil the Barbarian Dad, coming to you with another video today, and I hope that you guys are doing well. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the shortages in the food supply that are coming and what you can do about it, and specifically through growing food on your own property uh, throughout the year. So the points are that I want to make, um, A, you should be gardening, and if you can garden year-round, you should. If you can't garden year-round, year you should consider some things like a greenhouse and ways to extend your seasons um, and also consider other alternative ways of producing on your property, small livestock and uh, fish if you have water. So before we get into all of that good stuff, remi reminders for you guys out there that we're on Float, we're on MeWe, uh, we're on Instagram. Uh, continue to check out our website. I know it hasn't been updated uh, as much as I would like, but guys, I've been sick and I've been down and get back into school season. So give me a break uh, on that piece, but you know, keep checking out our YouTube channel. Uh, sign up for a newsletter. I'll start putting out some blog comments and I'm going to try to figure out how to put on our uh, podcast on, a, um, on the website up there. So I'll be looking at that and uh, you guys uh, keep on liking and subscribing for us and keep on commenting and doing all that good stuff sharing especially so appreciate y'all out there okay so let's talk about getting food um, well let's talk about food shortages first okay guys we remember at the first of the pandemic that the grocery stores went bare right there was a lot of things missing off the shelves it was hard to get a lot of meat it was a lot of canned goods were gone you know it was just kind of what you can find it reminded me a lot of the grocery stores in Europe and not as far as when I was there in, in Germany uh, so many years back and not as far as you know not having stuff but it re reminded me that there was only like one can of canned beans right there was only one kind one can one kind of canned beans um, and all that but the thing is, is that it wasn't just the you know the the amount um, that was there it was scary but it was also you know toilet paper and all that and that stuff's coming back guys there are um, there are already limits at Costco for toilet paper and paper towels when you can get them okay so we're seeing these things coming back uh, so if you don't have a TP for it already, you know, maybe you should do that. But more importantly, we should also think about uh, other sanitation items, soaps, um, you know, Clorox wipes, those kind of things, trying to get a stock of those, as well as food, because you need food to live and keep your energy up and do your things, right? So we need to consider doing that. And one of the best ways that we can do that is by growing some of our own food and growing harder things that will make it through. So. Let's think about some of those things and let's think about you know small livestock that can make it through that anybody can do. Uh, even in a lot of suburban yards or in the inner city yards, if you've got a yard, you can have chickens, you can do rabbits, there's a lot of things that you can do. Okay, uh, Let's start off with gardening. Uh, fall gardening is a fun and much easier practice I've found than summer gardening. You have a lot less pest and um, at least here in the south you can grow for a good long period of time. Uh, my favorite things to plant in the fall are mostly lettuces. I like the, the, the butter lettuces. I like the spinach. I like uh, kale. Kale is hardy. I like Swiss chards. There are some other things like broccolis and you know um, uh, cauliflowers that you can grow as well and there's a lot of uh, they do well. Okay, you can definitely check those out. But it seems like the bang for the buck really comes in the lettuces. Those are really expensive in stores and they're really easy to grow. So now is the time, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, scraping on September, it's getting close to it, um, to be considering getting your beds prepared for that. I know that um, when uh, Labor Day comes up, that I'm gonna be out there in the garden taking care of, you know, the uh, any plants that I can Remove that just aren't doing well from the summer crop that have been destroyed by the tomato hornworms or whatever. I'm gonna get those up and out. I'm gonna weed it. I'm gonna uh, try to uh, move my chicken, my mobile chicken pen. I'll show you guys that to give them some fresh excess grass as well as getting my, um, you know, garden that they've been running over and you know, pooping and scratching and doing all that kind of stuff uh, taken care of as well so that we can get use of that um, 
work that they've been doing for us so that we can get a bigger fall garden in this year. So that's what I'm going to work on uh, this upcoming Labor Day in a couple weeks. Uh, you should consider your plan there. Um, the reason that, again, that I like all those uh, things that uh, I mentioned earlier, all those plants, is that they grow very easily. Now, I will tell you that a lot of those lettuces, especially the kales, get hit hard by little bugs that like to eat them, and that happens throughout the fall and the spring. They come out and they will eat them. And then, um, so one thing you can do is you can get, uh, if you're into the organic uh, deal, you can use diatomaceous earth and chunk that on it, and that will take care of a lot of your pest problems. We'll take care of all of them. it will kill a lot of the aphids, kill a lot of the little worms that get on there, and solve you know a lot of those problems. You know, the one thing about diatomaceous earth is, though, that if, you, if it gets wet, it's inert. Okay? Uh, if you're not worried about that, you can use seven dust. Um, I typically reserve seven dust for my nuclear options. Like a plant's gonna die if I don't use it. And so I use it very sparingly. I use it on like uh, pit fruit trees that get hit by Japanese beetles because those things are horrible and they'll just come like wipe out that tree. So I will nuke that tree, uh, you know, just to get it up and running. But uh, I don't like to use seven dust um, because it's a harmful chemical. Um, but it has its uses, right? Um, if I'm gonna lose that tree, I'd rather I'd rather use it, but I try not to spray anything that's not organic on there, um, or you know less than um, not not really a hard chemical. I'll say a persistent chemical. Uh, but you will experience that on your kales, especially, and on some of your lettuces. And so again, diatomaceous earth is completely friendly for you to eat, especially if it's food grade, and you can dump that on your plants. It comes right off with water, and I suggest getting you know a bag of that, and you can just do a little sprinkle on your lettuce crops when they start to get hit a little bit and it will take care of all your problems and you can grow a ton of salad greens so you can do that you can plant some carrots they will weather through pretty decently um, they just won't grow as fast in the winter and fall um, so that's a good place to start there are some peas and things that you can do as well um, winter peas and I haven't had success with those mainly because I haven't done a good job with my soil at this place but uh, I'm going to probably try again this year because I've got a spot already you know, for my squash and a little fence and uh, already set up so I'm going to work on that. The next thing I'm working on is my giant chicken and turkey pen. Okay, So what I'm doing is I'm taking T-Post and I'm making a giant area on my property and I kind of showed you this in the property walkthrough tour and I just haven't had a chance just because I've been down and, and haven't been able to finish this fence. I've, I've done some more work on it but I'm going to get this fence finished or this um, I guess it's not really just a fence, it's actually a containment area that my gardens will be in, my turkeys, and my chickens. And I will be rotating those chickens and turkeys inside of that area. I will not be getting turkeys this fall, I will be getting them in the spring. Uh, I will probably be getting a couple more chickens as well. I'm going to go winter through with what I've got and we'll start the rotation period on those chickens if they start, you know, really laying off in leg and egg production, um, you know, next summer, but hopefully they'll give us another good season. Um, we will try to get some chicks this fall so that when winter hits, um, they'll be up and strong enough to make it through. And then when spring comes around, you know, around six months, they'll start their laying cycle. So we'll probably do a little bit of that, but no turkeys until spring. And then hopefully we'll have fresh turkey running around um, on the property. So you can do those kind of things as well. Turkeys may not be, or chickens may not be available to you, but um, due to government laws, we've already talked about getting out of the cities. So if you're stuck in a suburb, you can't get out, I get that, but you know, uh, there are things that you can do. You can still plant your gardens in your backyards. You can do container gardening if you can, if you don't have much of a yard. But if you're living in an apartment at this point in time, and I understand that finances are hard, you know, you can try to find somewhere, and you know, and it, you can make it work. It may not be the most ideal situation, right? Um, but man, get out of those cities. Try to find somewhere that's got a little plot of land that you can do something with, right? Even if it is a suburban lot, it's better than an apartment, guys. Um, but anyway, and I'm not shaming you, I'm just saying, you know, the time has passed, right? But anyway, if we go back to other animals that you can do, um, you can do rabbits. Um, I've done rabbits in the past before I started eating clean and they are easy and quiet. And they have cold manure, which you can put right on your garden and fertilize your garden right there. And you can take your, your scraps and throw them right into that 
pen with those rabbits and they'll eat the grasses and weeds and everything. And just you know, be careful what you give them. But pretty much rabbits are, are good about not, you know, um, eating things that are super bad for them. And you can, uh, you know, reuse your, your fodder. So um, that's great. Again, you got to be careful about what you're feeding them. But I think rabbits are a good tool, even if you're eating clean then you know you can use them as a processing facility and for cold manure. I'm not going to do that because I don't have time to mess around with something that I'm not getting direct production from um, and I'm thinking about you know maybe one day doing cows or something so I can get a little bit better manure source uh, but you know that's that's in the future. So there's that. Um, quail is something you can run to. You can do those quietly in the garage. Um, you can do um, them in a backyard in an aviary. You can do aquaponics, um, you know, and run fish again in your garage or in your backyard. You can extend a lot of that with little heaters and whatnot. It just kind of depends on how much energy you want to use and get your filters and pumps running. I got a pond in my backyard. Um, you know, if you're moving and you can have water on your property, that is so wonderful. Even if it's, you know, a pond and it's st a stagnant, you know, not, not running water, that's fantastic, right? Because you can do a lot. You can grow 10 times the protein in a pond system than you can in a um, you know a land-based system, but you know deal with what you got. Um, if you do have a pond, uh, you can still fish it when it's cold outside. The fish are just deeper and a little slower, uh, but you can stock up in there. And I'm thinking about adding in uh, either hybrid um, brim or maybe looking at seeing if crappie will make it in my pond. I don't know if they will or not. I haven't done the research on that, but I got a big enough pond to where if I could get some crappie established, I'm sure rather eat crappie than brim because brim are small and I like them better than bass, but it's what I got, right? So those are some options that you can do if you've got a pond or, you know, if you're looking to have a lake. And if you got running water, you know, if you got a stream or something like that um, coming through and it's not, you know, against the law, you can even dig a big hole, make a pond that's spring fed and then let it run out the other side and then you got running water, man, and that would be legit. So anyway, um, or if you just have a big creek, you can fish it, right? So, um, you know, a lot of options there. Um, so consider those things, consider having animals. Animals really bring a good dynamic to your property. It really connects you with your food. And, you know, again, chickens are easy and chickens are not loud as long as you, I mean, you could keep them even in the cities without a rooster um, and nobody would really know. I mean, just kind of up to you. Uh, but get that stuff done, get your fall gardens in, um, you know, there are other crops out there. Those are just kind of what I play with and I look at, uh, but I would definitely consider you know, getting all that stuff done and worked out uh, for this winter because these shortages are coming. You know, like I talked about earlier, it's not just shortages in supply, right? But it's shortages in choice. Um, and that's what I was referring to earlier about the European grocery stores. When you go you know, into a European grocery store, much smaller. And again, there was one type of bean. And I'm seeing that a lot now. There's one can of you know type of bean, and it's not quite that bad at our local Kroger, but um, you know there used to be five or six different kinds of you know red kidney bean, let's say, and now it's down to two, and that's happening with all the different kinds of condiments and all the different kinds of things. So it's just they're shortening down a lot. Um, so packaging, supply, processing, all that's going down, and we're gonna run into some shortages again. So do think about how you can produce in your backyard, even over the winter. Uh, I think it's easier again because you got less crap trying to eat your stuff, but you still have to be cognizant that there are pests out there. Um, let's go out there and do that. Don't forget to keep stocking food. Um, there are uh, many cheap options. Rice is not as cheap as it once was, but it's still super cheap. And you can still go get a bucket, a bag of rice, and put that stuff up for less than 20 bucks. And if you want to do it even better, again, check out my uh, proper way to store long-term grains in buckets and you know see the mylar and the O2 absorbers and um, the deficit packages you can use to keep your food even longer and uh, you know obviously if you keep that in a temperature controlled area it will last for you know longer than you will so keep stacking buckets um, keep looking at how you can improve your property and your situation with that and then here at the end Remember that fall is actually the best time to start planting your fruit trees and fruit bushes, okay? Um, in the fall, things are dormant, and it gives the opportunity for the roots to get established and grow beneath the soil and be ready for that spring explosion, okay? So I know that this year, 
Uh, I've lost a couple trees that I've planted. Um, and I didn't get many planted in the spring. I did get a few uh, blueberry bushes planted, but didn't get as much as I wanted done. And I'm going to go and get some good trees from my local nursery and start getting those planted here in September, October. And I will have them um, ready to go for the spring. Remember, fruit trees are a long-term play. You know, it's going to be four or five years uh, before you really should get fruit off those. But I'll tell you, you know, it was really cool. I drove by the house I used to live at, and I planted over 100 trees on that property, all different kinds of fruit producing. The guy is not keeping them up um, in the big field that I planted them all in. I was going to make a big walkthrough food forest, but I could drive by and see that they've been growing, the ones that made it, the hardy ones, and the ones up by the house that they have been uh, keeping up. There were some peach trees up there, man, and I'll tell you, they're huge, you know, and that was from, you know, five years ago. They look great. Um, and I'm, I'm sad that I'm not getting those, but I'm glad that they had those there. But there's all different things that you can plant out there. You just have to be patient on them. Um, so consider, you know, getting those fruit trees, finding your, um, finding your uh, supply today. Local nurseries are great. I will put on a couple of websites that you can go to for seeds, like Victory Seed, uh, down in the notes. Um, I use Victory Seed a lot. There's another one in there that I use. And I forget what they're called. And um, Rain Tree Forest Nursery is where I've gotten a lot of plants from. So I'll put those on there as well. Um, find some cool plants you can that'll, that'll make it in your area. Uh, so we're, I'm going to definitely try to do that and get some cool plants up and going. So anyway, guys, I uh, hope this has been helpful to you. Um, remember, it's your responsibility to take care of your family and to feed them. And the grocery stores may not always be a, an opportunity to you especially as things uh, continue to devolve with requirements for certain things that um, are being forced to put into our bodies. Um, you know, we don't know what that's going to look like. If you're a person that has faith in the uh, God Almighty, the one true God of Jacob, Abraham, and Isaac, and uh, the Lord Yeshua, then you know, if you've read Revelations, that there will be a mark one day that... Uh, you cannot buy or sell with. And even if you don't, there are a lot of places out there today that you can't buy, trade, or sell, or work without having, uh, you know, a proof. And I'm not saying that the solution is the mark, but what I am saying is that this is a precursor to such things. So, um, you have an opportunity and a window that is closing, okay? Build your systems. Don't panic, do what you can do. Don't go into debt over it because it will take your shit if you're in debt and you can't pay your bills. But do what you can do today, gardening's cheap, okay? Just a little bit of manual labor. Love you guys, stay uncivilized.